Hi, I'm Andrea. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Andrea. And I have been through the process with a, a loving Big Book Step Study sponsor who helped me reconnect with the God of my understanding and form a deeper relationship with that God. Um, I am making my amends, uh, and I practice 10 and 11 and 12 to the best of my willingness uh, on a daily basis. I sponsor women who are willing to take other women through the process. I have some service positions. Um, and my sobriety date is January 5th, 2004. And uh, I've done this before, right? I've, I've, through the years, I've been a speaker and uh, it doesn't take away from the fear and the vulnerability. So let's just put that out there, break the ice. <clears throat> and uh, you know, something that I've learned about myself in regards to that fear is, uh, you know, when I engage in the fear, enough, that's when my behaviors will start to change to um, protect me. And those are those character defects that I learned through my writing, you know, self-preservation. And in the past, I would have waited to the last minute and then I would have bailed. That would have been the character defect based off of that fear, right? And uh, it would have been a selfish decision without having any concern for the time, um, you know, that it would take for my sponsor to have to look for somebody last minute, right? <clears throat> but if I'm going to talk about six and seven, I think that I should start, uh, go a little bit back into some history here and, um, and not talk about what it was like when I was active, but I do want to talk about what happened the first time that I came into the halls um, of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I came in and I came in, I, I was court ordered and um, so I attended the meetings because I was paranoid that they were spying on me. So uh, <laughs> I wasn't going because I wanted to go, you know. And um, a message that I had heard at the time was just don't drink and come to meetings. And so I just didn't drink and I went to meetings. And uh, I sat in the back with my arms across my chest and women gave me their phone numbers and I threw the phone numbers out. And uh, I spent my time smoking cigarettes out in the parking lot. And uh, I would leave early. Um, and I was riddled with fear, and I was acting out all over the place, all over the place. And I didn't know then that my behaviors were these defects in my character, right? That I was engaging in behaviors that for a very long time served a purpose, right? They got the job done. They didn't do like anything healthy, <laughs> but they got the job done, and I was engaging them based out of fear. And um, I stayed dry for a year. I got my medallion, and um, I remember sharing at the meeting that was um, the meeting that I attended um, in that time, and I said, I think I'm going to drink. I know I'm going to drink, right? I, um, something that had, I had a moment of clarity in the behavior that I was engaging in. I had been stealing my mother's credit card in sobriety, and I was going shopping. <laughs> And something, I had this moment, this glimpse into how I, you know, was doing the same thing that I was doing when I was active. I just wasn't using anymore. So nothing had changed. And it was shortly after that I, I, I had picked up again because I was seeking ease and comfort, right? I was restless, irritable, and discontented, you know? And um, for me, what my understanding is today of being restless, irritable, and discontented is, you know, it's just being emotionally disturbed and then acting out because of those emotions, right? And um, trying to protect myself. Um, and, and I saw ease and comfort and I went back out and I was fortunate enough that I was able to make it back. And I made it back and I jumped into the program immediately. Now the first time I had jumped into program, it was through the big book, it wasn't big book step study, but I came around to these meetings, I came around to these meetings when they were on Lincoln Street, when we were in that small room in, in that little brown church. <laughs> um, and I loved it, I loved the message that I heard. You know what else I loved? I loved that I didn't have to speak because I hadn't been through the process yet, so I could just sit, right? Um, but I loved it. And, um, but I didn't get a sponsor through big book step study. Oh my God, I can't cross my legs, there we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, I didn't get a sponsor through Big Book Step Study. So I had gone through the process just um, slightly different. There is a difference. I didn't think there was um, a difference at, at, you know, for a long time, but I, I recognize the difference today. And I stayed sober for a long time, you know. Um, but I'm human and I have these flaws and, uh, and instincts. We all have instincts that create us, that create self, right? And um, I want to belong. I, uh, I want to belong, I want to be accepted, um, 
I want financial security. I want, you know, good relationships. But I started cutting out a lot of the things that were helping me to stay well. And I actually, basically what it, I did is I stopped doing the work and I was resting on my laurels, you know. And uh, my mind told me that you're good, you got this. You know, you know, you know it was self-knowledge, really. It was self-knowledge, self-will, self-reliance. And um, so the fear crept in and, um, you know, the dishonest thoughts started kicking in again. And, and I uh, started creating stories in my head about how uh, I didn't belong at the meetings that I was going to anymore. And I'm a fraud in AA. And um, I, I dropped sponsees. And um, I had a really dark period in my sobriety. And I was fortunate enough um, that the people that I had had in my life in sobriety had noticed a change in my character, right? Um, and the change in my character was that I had gone backwards, right? And I, and I was just in a lot of self-pity and I was isolating. And I disappeared from AA for a couple of years. And then I, I came back and I was going to this um, Tuesday big book meeting and um, I, was, I started plugging in to, you know, um, you know, my spiritual practices, I was plugging into the universe and I recognized that I, I needed guidance again. And, um, and I was looking for a, a new sponsor uh, and I had heard Amy and I prayed every, you know, every week, every time for, you know, to be, um, you know, show me, show me who my teacher is going to be this time, right? And um, so I go up to her and I said something along the lines of, hey, so I'm looking for a new sponsor. I'm really low maintenance. <laughs> I've been through the process and I just need somebody to carry me through, right? And she said, well, I do a big book step study and are you willing to go through the process? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, that could have been God, right? Working through me. It could have been a character defect. <laughs> it could have been my people pleasing, right? Um, I'd like to think that it was God. I'd, li I'd like to think that God was like, say yes, you know, this, this is your teacher. And I was able to go through the process again. And, you know, I learned a lot that first time that I had gone through. Um, but this time around, I was able to see, like, I know that I had character defects. I had behaviors when I was actively using. We all do. Um, but I was able to see where self-reliance failed me in sobriety, where I cut God out in sobriety. And so when I went through the process again, I saw, I saw where, you know, fear was running the show. And I saw that I, you know, it didn't matter that I had time. I was a dry drunk, right? I had periods where I wasn't in the beginning, but I was really coasting on like that first year of sobriety, you know, for the rest of that time. And, um, and, you know, we went through and, 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 and I was able to, in my inventory and in my fifth step, that's where I saw my character defects again. And I was able to see, I think the beauty of writing things down and doing an inventory is that, you know, it's one thing that I have something in my head and I think about it. I dismiss that thought when another thought comes in. I, it's not clear to me the patterns. When I write it down, there's a pattern there. That's what I see. And, uh, and I was able to see that these behaviors that I was engaging in out of self-preservation and um, out of the lie that thinking that it was still, um, you, know, doing, you know, doing me a service, you know, and, um, and, and that's what, you know, to, to get to that point, first of all, in the fifth step, uh, you know, I was able to not only invite God in, but I think that that's where the bonding comes in with the sponsor, you know. Uh, that's where the re relationship really unfolds. I'm allowing myself to be vulnerable in this moment and, um, and have blind faith that I'm going to be taken care of in that moment. And, um, and God worked through her and... Uh, and, you know, I was instructed after that to, to take down the, you know, to take the 12 and 12, take down the book. I like have this image of taking down the book from the shelf. It was like somewhere else. <laughs> it wasn't on a shelf. But, um, and there's a line in there about this is the step that separates the boys from the men, right? And I used to say that a lot, uh, you know, but I never really understood what that was. And today what I recognize is that um, it's about emotional sobriety, that's, that's the growing up. 
uh, that all these behaviors that I engaged in, uh, you know, was I was essentially like a 12 year old kid running through the world in an adult body. That's what it was like, you know. Um, and I was I was disconnecting myself with people, even though I thought that I was connected. Um, Self-loathing is one of the biggest character defects that I can still engage in today. And, um, and I have to be cautious of that uh, because I can create a really big story and, uh, and cut myself off from the world again when I'm, when I'm there. So I had some experiences shortly after where, um, and this is where God showed up in my life. So I had some experiences where... Uh, the universe was like, it's time to work on some of this stuff. And I think about how, like, they talked about the, to be willing is uh, indispensable, right? And I think about, for me, willingness is being prepared and ready to endure, right? Prepared and ready to endure. So, like, if I'm praying, you know, and asking God to remove a certain defect, it's, you know, when that defect, when I become aware of uh, that I'm engaging in it, Am I prepared and ready to endure the, the work I'm going to have to do to push through this, right? So here's an example where I was, you know, at a meeting and I started personalizing some comments that were being made uh, and I thought it was about me. And it could have been, right? But I didn't have any evidence to support that. I created the story in my head and then I, um, I went with that story. Now... This is the type of stuff that back before I went through the process again was where I stopped going to meetings, right? Because I was like thinking that people were judging me and, and making comments about me and this insecurity of you don't belong, you don't belong, and everybody's going to remember this and they're all, you know, it's like in the movie Carrie, they're all going to laugh at you, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I called Amy and I was mortified and I was crying right? And I was like, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to speak again. And um, I was going to cut myself off from this meeting and, and, and that was it. But I, I pushed through, right? And uh, that's the endurance for me, right? To be willing to be prepared and ready. So the character defect was get out of Dodge, right? Protect yourself. You don't belong in this community anymore, right? That's the defect. And I attended these, I kept going to these meetings raw, right? That was the fear, right? Because of that story is I was raw and I was just like, I want to go, I want to go, but I pushed through and, um, and I was able to start, you know, speaking again and, and being myself and, and, and relying and trusting that, you know, when I trust and rely on God, I know that I am enough, right? When I trust and rely on God, I know that uh, I am safe, I am protected when I trust and rely on God. And today, the person that I thought had it out for me, uh, you know, I don't want to say we're dear friends, but I mean, we're, we're cool with each other, right? And I feel like I belong again. To me, that was growing up emotionally, right? That was emotional growth right there. Uh, and I was able to, through the endurance, I was able to see that I can get through the other side when I invite God in, right? Some of the things that I have to ask myself when I'm like, you know, engaging in things is, you know, is this even serving you a purpose anymore, this behavior? And if it's not, what is the fear of letting it go? If I recognize that it's not doing me anything good, why can't I let it go, right? And so that's the, you know, the exploration. So that defect for me, that was one, and they talk about it, how some of them, they say, this one I'll give up, this one I'm going to hold on to. I, I butchered that, but it's something along those lines. And that, that one right there, I held on, I nurtured that defect for a long time. It took, it took 15 years at that point before I was ready to give that one up. So I say that because when I first came around, I was like, oh, six and seven's the shortest reading in the book. Done, right? I didn't realize that it was like the most spiritual of the steps. For me, in my experience, it's the most spiritual because there's a constant surrender. You know, when I'm open to, you know, um, open to that, uh, there's a constant surrender, uh, which means it's constantly bringing me back to God's will and not mine, right? And, um, Oh man, I drew a blank. Does that mean that God's like, should stop talking? That might mean that God's like, stop talking. Anyways, um, so what I will say with this is, uh, you know, 
when drinking, right, and you think about your drinking history, and you think about that first time you took a drink, and you often hear things like, I could finally breathe, right? Yeah, when I took that drink of alcohol, I could finally breathe. Um, getting through the process this way and understanding myself this way, I feel like I can finally breathe, right? And uh, Eduardo was actually talking to us um, and uh, was talking about how great his couple weeks have been and uh, it's not because everything was perfect, he just got through it, right? And I, sorry Eduardo, but I relate to that, that's why I'm bringing it up because that's the stuff, right? Like, I don't want it to be perfect. I want to know that there's a solution I can get out on the other side and that I'm going to be okay. That's what I want. I want to know that my human condition, that I'm going to be okay, right? And I'm going to be able to get through that stuff. That's what I want to know. That's what I like to hear, that there is a solution and continues to be a solution and that we're all human. This stuff is going to keep showing up. It still shows up um, to this day. But, um, you know, I have an opportunity to, now that I feel like I'm in a state of consciousness and not sleepwalking, that you know, taking advantage of those moments um, and recognizing that there's more work to be done, right? There's more growing up to be done and, and, and to, to continue in that action. So I will end with that. Thank awesome. you. Oh my God. <laughs>